Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to another lesson on creating water animation using After Effects and Flash. So what we've got here is a wave crashing on a beach. It's not one that I've developed to completion, but it is a really nice effect that I've worked out and I'm hoping to use at some point in one of my animations. So let's just play it through in After Effects. I should say at this point, if you've not watched my how to use the Wave Warp tool tutorial, please do go and check that out. Otherwise, this is not gonna make any sense. So let's just move through. And what we've got is this nice kind of wave that's gradually getting thinner and then kind of breaking apart as it moves across the screen, kind of crashes on the beach. So if you imagine this blue area here was actually beach colored, a nice kind of sand color, this area here would still be blue. It's the kind of effect that you get where a wave crashes on the beach and gradually the foam dissipates before the wave moves back out to sea and the whole process starts again. So how have I done this? Let's take a look. What we've got is a pre-comp here in our main composition. So this pre-comp, I'm gonna rename it Wave Warp, just to make life more simple. And our main comp, I'm gonna press enter and call it main comp. There we go. So inside this Wave Warp, pre-comp, if I double click on it, what we've got is this kind of really interesting bit of animation here. We've got a shape layer, and if we turn the wave warp effect off, what we've got is a shape layer that gradually gets thinner. It's just a rectangle with a white fill. It gradually gets super thin, like so. And what I've done is I've put a wave warp effect on top of that using smooth noise. Smooth noise is the one to go for if you're wanting a much more natural effect of kind of random, smooth, flowing curves. And you might be wondering why it's so pixelated. That's because when you ramp the wave height and the wave width up to values like uh, 2,993, in height and 1,545 in width, uh, it starts to pixelate. This is essentially a bitmap effect that's being applied to a vector layer. So that's why you get these kind of very blocky results. And it's your responsibility when you trace it in flash to kind of round those out and make them look more interesting. So all this pre-comp is, is like I said, it's that fill gradually getting smaller and this wave warp of smooth noise passing through it. Uh, what I've done is I've posterized time to 12 frames a second. Because this is quite a complex bit of smooth flowing animation, I felt that it needed 12 frames a second. But you can play about and make it more or less if you like. The direction is minus three. So it's just giving a slight uh, slant to the animation. If I jog it round, you can see that you get different results depending on what direction you use. The wave speed is really slow. It's minus 0 0.1. So it's traveling to the left and 0.1 is really quite slow. But, the, but that's appropriate for this animation because these types of waves sort of crashing on the beach are quite slow. We've got pinning all edges. That's just what worked out best when I fiddled around with it. And we've got no phase and an anti-aliasing quality of high. Put it on low. Doesn't really make that much difference, but I'll stick it on high. Uh, so that's this wave warp pre-comp. So this pre-comp has that shape layer getting smaller, much thinner like that. And then in the main composition, I've used this Wave Warp pre-comp, and I've put this royal blue solid underneath it so that it looks 
more interesting. And what I've done is I've made this layer 3D. You can see this little box here shows that this layer is 3D. If you don't know how to use 3D in After Effects, check out my 3D in After Effects tutorial on my website, hexjibber.com. And I've just put it at a kind of angle. If you look at the rotation by pressing R, you can see that the X rotation is minus 51. So I've done that so that we get a kind of bird's eye view on this wave as if we were standing on the beach looking down at it. So apart from the rotation, if we look at the position by pressing P, there are two keyframes moving this wave from the right hand side of the screen to the left very, very slowly. So as it thins out, it moves across the screen. So it's really simple. It's a nice, simple bit of animation using a pre-comp and a bit of 3D. You can, of course, have it at any angle you want. You can spin it around. You can spin it around any which way you like to get the effect that you want. But this is the one I chose. Just before I wrap up, you might notice that there's a bit of a drop shadow on this wave. And that's because I've put a drop shadow using the layer styles on there. So you can do that by right clicking on the layer and going to layer styles and choosing one of the ones from here. You might want to turn that off before you render it just so you get a nice crisp effect and then you can add a drop shadow in flash. The reason I put a drop shadow on there is because you tend to get that little drop shadow in reality when you see these types of very, very thin waves, thin layers of water moving over sand. So that's just something to bear in mind. So there's no need for me to find the loop in this animation because it's not looping, it's just one animation that plays through. But I have limited the work area to the point where the animation should stop. And I could export that as a PNG sequence and bring it into Flash. I can either trace over it using a Wacom tablet or using the trace bitmap function. So that's a wave crashing on a beach. Have a go yourself. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.